tragedy. Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and today I want to talk to you about my gladiolas. My gladiolas were basically a graveyard. It was absolutely heartbreaking as to the story behind what happened to my gladiolas this year. So last year I had probably 1500 gladiolas and they were my number one seller at my, my porch sales, my bouquet bars. They were huge with my CSA members. I fell in love with them and I fell hard. I did have one issue on the darker gladiolas and that was thrips. So thrips are tiny little insects that are just the worst thing ever. But I was only seeing that damage on the dark purple flowers that I was harvesting. So I would just set those aside and not really worry about it. I had, oh, hundreds more to choose from and to provide my customers with. So with that said, the season ended and I said, all right, I'm doubling down on my gladiolas next year because they're amazing, everyone loves them. They add such structure and height to my arrangements and the florist was asking me for them all the time. So I ordered in about 3,000 gladiolus corms for 2021 and I planted them all. So I ordered, I mean, I went over this with you guys and I had white ones, I had Jessica gladiolas, I had mixed ones, I had pastel ones and I planted them all in two weeks succession so that I could be harvesting gladiolas all season long. I also had a little section in the back of the deer fence where I did an experiment where I left the gladiolas in the ground all winter long. And that was successful. We only had, I would say, negative 17 degrees Fahrenheit was our low for the winter, which is fairly mild for us. I know it doesn't sound mild, 17 below. Anyway, it was a mild winter and the gladiolus corms survived and those 200 or so ended up coming back and blooming beautifully. And those are the first ones that I was harvesting. The other ones, meanwhile, were unusable absolutely horrible. I started noticing some discoloration on the buds as I was harvesting them to use them in bouquets and uh, it was kind of a little bit brown on the tips and then I look closer and I open up the, the petals a little bit and I see thrips. They're all over every single one of my plants. And I even preconditioned these corms to make sure that they weren't gonna have thrips. So I don't think they were on the corm. I think they're in my soil. So thrips can overwinter in your soil and lay eggs and just multiply. So this isn't an issue with the product. This is an issue with what I have in the ground here already. So I'm definitely going to be doing some things next season to fix this. I'm going to be using some beneficial nematodes and things like that. There are companies out there that provide organic solutions and um, even some other things like bringing in some predators. There are a lot of things you can do. Uh, I treated my corms with diatomaceous earth, the ones that I stored over the winter and also the ones that I got new in the mail this year from my supplier, which by the way, the link to my supplier is in the description below. This brings me to the Dame Edna challenge. I was was going to do a recreation of a famous Dame Edna photo where um, Dave, Dame Edna is an Australian comedian who um, had a fondness for Gladys and there's this one picture, well, there's a few, but there's this one iconic picture where she's got the gladiolas um, all over and I was gonna recreate that and that was gonna be one of my fun projects for the summer but because of my gladiola situation I uh, was unable to do that and I thought about you know um, bringing in some gladiolas from like the the wholesaler or another flower farm I just didn't feel that was genuine the whole Dame Edna challenge that I, I had was gonna be my gladiolas and if they weren't mine I didn't feel like it was gonna be a genuine recreation I decided let's postpone that for one more year and I'm gonna try one more time with gladiolas because I cannot give them that much space inside the deer fence. They had, oh, uh, maybe like a 15 by 20 foot space in the deer fence, which is a lot of real estate inside of a fenced in area. So I've decided what I'm going to do next year is bring them outside of the deer fence and away from that soil that the thrips clearly are loving. And I'm gonna bring them way far away onto the other side of the property 
and build basically a structure like I protected my tulips. Three years ago, I built this little structure that covered my tulips and I'm going to try to do that with the gladiolas. So they're outside the deer fence, away from the contaminated soil and bring them far away and see if the gladiolas come back for me uh, while I'm treating the soil inside the deer fence for the thrips. So we'll see if that makes an improvement or not because I don't really wanna give up on gladiolas. I know some flower farmers have given up on gladiolas because of the thrip situation. Lisa Mason Ziegler, in fact, from the Gardener's Workshop, no longer grows gladiolas because of the thrips. So it's a common issue uh, and I just, it, it took three years for that issue to hit me, big time. You know, I had them year two. Year one, nothing, no thrips, beautiful gladiolas. Year two, couple, couple thrips, couple two, three, couple two, three, a little damage on the, the dark purple ones. Year three, boom, complete devastation of the crop, except for that one small crop that was way far away from where I planted the majority of them. So yeah, uh, the gladiola graveyard. So I ended up lifting the gladiolas anyway, and I am going to store them. I did treat them with diatomaceous earth, and I do not see any thrip activity inside the corn. I don't think that they were living and overwintering with them anyway. So I'm really hoping that moving locations and treating the soil will help me for next season. Even if I have to rotate them, once the thrips find out where they are and they keep coming, that's a problem. So if I have to move the gladiolas every year to kind of um, outsmart the bugs, <laughs> Isn't that crazy that we have to outsmart the bugs? That's just the reality of it. So anyway, that's the explanation for what happened to my gladiolas this year. It was devastating. I, I actually just didn't really want to talk about it because it was that upsetting for me. And this is, you know, everyone always says, you know, cut down on the number of things that you grow and focus on a few main crops. Well, if I cut down on the varieties that I was growing, and I lost my entire gladiola crop, I wouldn't have had anything else to put with my lilies and with my snapdragons. You, you have to have a variety because crop failures are a thing. I would not have been able to offer my market bouquets if I was only growing three or four things. That's just not, it's just not something that would have happened. So I am grateful for growing a crazy amount of things because I always have something to fall back on if I lose a crop. And it wasn't the only crop I lost this year, but we'll talk about that another time. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to explain the gladiolas. Day Medna challenge delayed. Hopefully 2022 is the year for the dame. Anyway, all right, thanks for sticking around. We'll see you. Now, a lot of times you'll pull and the corn will come with it. Sometimes it won't. This is a pain in the butt. But what I do after I'm done with the entire row is I get my pitchfork and I just kind of loosen the soil and lift up just like I'm looking for potatoes. Then gladiolus corn. And my husband's using a saw right now. So, sorry for that. Is my head getting cut off? I feel like my head's getting cut off. Brad's using the saw. Not recording over here or anything. Go ahead. Go on with your life. You almost done with that saw? Okay. Can you see me? Is it too bright? Gladiola crap. There's a bug on it right now. 